today with TV Travel News, we're going on a tour of the unique town of Twillingate, Newfoundland. Twillingate has a rugged landscape that juxtaposes against the surrounding ocean background. Tourists favor this area for its natural beauty, art, and culture. We're here with Twillingate Adventure Tours, going out on a boat ride. We're suiting up with the survival suits here. We're gonna go into the little coves here, explore some of the history along the coastline here. Uh, it's very rich in history. Might see some whales, icebergs, that kind of thing. Boat tours are a staple of Twillingate tourism and a great way to appreciate the beautiful geography of the area. They offer the opportunity to see whales, other marine life, as well as enormous icebergs. These North Atlantic waters are known for their fisheries and for centuries attracted European fishing fleets in pursuit of huge and plentiful codfish whose habitat surrounds the oceanic shelf of Newfoundland. The fishery formed much of the present day fabric of Newfoundland culture. However, overexploitation of the fishery eventually led to a commercial moratorium. Since then, the fishery has partially rebounded and remains an important local food supply for people living in coastal areas of the province. Today, Twillingate's fishing economy is complemented by a burgeoning tourism sector. Twillingate offers a multitude of different tourism activities, and of course, the cod and seafood that's prepared at restaurants throughout Newfoundland is some of the best in the whole world. So when you're in the middle of Twillingate, uh, there's lots to see, lots to do. There's uh, Scott's Pencil Art Gallery, there's Dinner Theater, uh, fresh seafood markets. This is Twillingate South. On this side of this little causeway, a stage head pub here, which uh, is the flagship pub for Split Rock Brewery, which you can see there's some barrels inside of here. Great beer, lots of variety, really good stuff. They got the nitro on tap and everything, so you can get a really nice pint pole here. You got the uh, artisan market, really cool stuff. You can get some great food here. Uh, Ann's restaurant just down the street too. Really nice stuff, they do their own micro green, uh, uh, salads that they grow the, the greens in their own greenhouse. So uh, we're gonna continue on to uh, north uh, north part of the island here towards Crowhead. We're gonna stop at the uh, there's a little drive-through right now for the um, cafe. I haven't tried the drive-through yet. Um, so we'll probably hit the drive-through, drink our coffee, continue up. We're gonna hike around uh, North Twillingate and Crow Crowhead. Anyway, so uh, check it out. So we're in the artisan market right now, and there's lots of cool stuff here. As you can see, there's local local crafts. I recognize a few of the um, the artists here. There's um, this fellow here. He does pewter um, pewter artwork. I've got a couple of his pieces. Very nice. He's in St. John's, and you can find a few other things. Really cool local. There's this purity company makes uh, jam jams and local things here that are you got to try when you're here. There's some great trails here. There's lots of caves in this area. On the way, it's great, lots of vegetation. If you come in August, tons of blueberries. It's covered in blueberries. Watch out, there's a bit of stinging nettle, a few Scottish thistles here and there, but otherwise it's a really easy trail, very safe. Lots of rocky beaches around here. Uh, it's not, not really suitable sw for swimming just because it's cold, but it's quite nice to, uh, to stand and listen to the water, move the rocks around, and if you're really brave you could you could run out there in your bare feet um, but after a few minutes it's pretty chilly I don't know if you can still see it but 
Hi, he's gone now. We just scared the heck out of a seal that was here sleeping on the beach. I think it scared us too, actually. I just heard something moving and it was this, uh, this seal was all dried out in the sun, sitting here in the sun, drying off. And, uh, and we woke him up and he just, just scooted out into the water just now. So really cool. As you can see, you know, this is a pretty undisturbed area. You can see wildlife like that, like a seal. When you look in the uh, kind of intertidal waters here, there's lots of mussels and uh, the closer you get, the more you see. Little barnacles, uh, sea vegetation. And if you walk out into these, these rocks, they're absolutely covered when you get close enough, covered in, in shells that, that have little tentacles that come out of them and you know, not in, a, not in a gross way. They're very, very small. You walk right over them and not even notice, but get up close, take a good look, and they're very cool. There's a little community of, of uh, plant life and marine intertidal life in these areas. So that was pretty nice. First seal of the day. Absolutely beautiful on this coastline trail. Uh, you can see as you get up and the sun comes out a bit, you can see right into the water for quite a ways out. It's super clean. Wildflowers in the way, lots of clover, berries, juniper berries here. You can see over this way there's um, wild irises in bloom. Very beautiful. A variety of lots of plant life with, and not a lot of grass. It's more ground cover and flowering plants and berries, so it's great. You feel like you're a giant walking on top of uh, a different type of forest or something with the, uh, the dwarf um, dwarf evergreens and that kind of thing. So pretty cool and the view is just stunning. really nice spot and there's tons of things to do down in the town yeah, you need a few days check out all the cool spots and beautiful places to stay the B&B's are like old captains houses that are converted and uh, some of them have just incredible old relics inside the antique furniture and so on um, so definitely you can't miss it like when you come to the area spend a few days for sure there's tours there's boat tours go to watch the uh, whales icebergs also uh, there's tons of hiking, coastal trails, Twilling Gate Islands coastal trails are beautiful both in the south and the, uh, the north part of the islands. At the very north tip you have uh, the town of Crowhead and this big lighthouse here was constructed uh, well years ago whenever fishing European people came here fishing. It's the French who first uh, colonized here um, from Europe and they call it Tuling, Tulinguet, something it was a French name, they kind of anglicized it into Twillingate. There was actually a famous opera singer from here in the 1800s who traveled the world. She changed her name, her stage name was Marie Twillingate, uh, after the original French uh, nomenclature of this, this area. Uh, great views from the, the, uh, the cliffside here. You can hike through all kinds of coastal trails. You can see just off to our, our right here, there's a, a trail going right along here. Don't want to walk your dog too close to these edges. There's no guardrails on a lot of them. Uh, in the winter time, the spray goes up halfway here. It's really choppy water. Not the best spot for swimming, but you can hike down there. Sometimes you see dolphins, uh, sea lions. We saw a uh, seal once today already. And out here, if you watch for the spray, you can see whales uh, migrating right across. Uh, also, they call this the Iceberg Alley of Newfoundland. There's uh, this year wasn't a great uh, iceberg year because there's a lot of what they call off wind. Just the wind pushed them off farther out into the ocean. But normally there's hundreds of icebergs you can see here, big ones, 10,000 year old pieces of water. There's actually a, an iceberg vodka that's made in Newfoundland. People who go out in their boat and collect the ice, harvest that ice, and distill it into uh, vodka. So that's, that's pretty cool. 
check that out when you're here too. Now the lighthouse has been converted into a, um, a museum featuring uh, the history of the Titanic. Now that's significant for this area because when the Titanic struck an iceberg and sank, uh, you know, and there was the distress calls, responders from Newfoundland went out to the to the wreckage to try and and uh, save any survivors. And uh, so a lot of the history of the Titanic is connected to this area. Uh, unfortunately, when it, it was going from London down to New York, it would have been a little bit more north in that uh, in that travel. And when it struck the icebergs and they thought it was unsinkable, well, of course, icebergs, you see the tip of it, but they're huge underneath, and it just scratched the hull right out of it. So, uh, sank the thing, and, but anyway, fishing, uh, fishing boats and local vessels went from here to answer the distress call to try and uh, save anyone. So, there's a really great uh, museum right in that lighthouse there, commemorating that event. There's also a lot of science here. Check them out. It talks about the whale biology, the different types of whales you can see here. They come in as the cod come in. Cod come in as the capelin roll, which should be happening any time now around here. That's the little uh, primary productive fish that feed off of smaller invertebrates and whatever, and then uh, the bigger cod come in and chase them in. So in the uh, right time of year, when the waves come in, these actually roll with the waves. We call it the capelin rolling and they splash up on the beach and they flop around on, on the beach and people go and collect them too. You can eat them. Uh, it's a tradition here and they're really nice. They're, they're quite good. You can salt them and uh, that denotes the beginning of the cod fishery too which starts next week. The uh, recreational fishery that is starts ne next week. Uh, there's about 40 days of the year where um, uh, residents in Newfoundland can catch 10 or 15 cod a day. Um, and. Uh, they're quite plentiful now. Uh, if you come a bit later, you might not catch the capelin rolling, but you get some other beautiful things like the berries. The berries are in season. So from spring to fall, really, uh, even if you come in September here, it's amazing. There's a lot, you get the beautiful hiking, berries, uh, really awesome. So when you're here in Twilling Gate, check out this area for sure. You can spend a day out here. Up at the Titanic exhibit, it's really interesting. There's parts of the, there's old pieces of boat and things like that with the story behind it and the people who collected them. Very cool. Also, it's interesting to note, this lighthouse was actually constructed from materials that were brought up from the sea. They came all from boats, pulled up on cables, and it's a far ways down. Like it's really quite far. So this was built before there were roads here. And uh, just to show before people would come from Europe, uh, fish here and then go back. So of course they wanted a lighthouse here to know where the rocks are. So all the materials for that lighthouse were, were pulled up from down there. Thank you so much for checking in with us at TV Travel News and our trip to Twillingate, Newfoundland. Be sure to give us a like and follow TV Travel News so that we can show you more destinations like this one.